In this lesson, we're going to discuss Security Gateway's IP shielding feature, including what it is and how IP shielding works to help prevent spoofing. We'll talk about how to configure IP shielding, how to configure IP shielding exclusions, and using IP shielding as an alternative authentication method. Another setting that can help ensure the authenticity of a message sender is the IP shielding feature located here under the anti-abuse section in Security Gateway. What IP shielding does is it allows you to specify what IP addresses or ranges of IP addresses a message must have been sent from if it claims to be sent from your domain. So, for example, standard practice would be to assign all of the IP addresses on your local network to all of the local domains that Security Gateway is protecting. And then that way, if mail claiming to come from one of those domains does not come from an authorized IP address, then it is rejected. Now, of course, you can make exceptions for those sending mail from outside of your local network if they are using SNTP authentication or if the messages are addressed to a valid local user or if the message came from a domain mail server and your exceptions or your exclusions are located uh, down here. So this is a good tool to help prevent spoofing because if a message arrives from one of your domains from an unrecognized IP address and it is not using SMTP authentication, then that indicates a spoofing attempt of some type and that activity is blocked. One other use for this particular tool is if you have a device on your network, such as a, a network attached a printer or some other device that is not capable of authenticating, you can configure exceptions within your SMTP authentication settings for that particular device and then use the IP shielding instead. So for example, if we go back to the SMTP authentication screen here, and let's say you, you are requiring SMTP authentication, but you have a device that needs to be able to send mail but it doesn't have the capability of authenticating, yet it is on an authorized IP address, then you can add the IP address of that particular device to the whitelist and then check this box stating unless messages from a whitelisted IP address or host and then use the IP shielding feature instead so that when that particular device sends mail, Security Gateway will recognize that it is from an authorized IP address and then send the message. By default, Security Gateway compares the values that you specify down here with the SMTP mail from command that is passed during message transmission. If you check this box here, Security Gateway will also compare the messages from header in addition to that taken from the SMTP, what we call basically the SMTP envelope. To add a new entry to the IP shield, simply click on New, enter the domain that you'd like to associate with an IP address or range of IP addresses. And of course, if you'd like to include all of your local domains, you can use the dollar sign local domain dollar sign macro to specify that information. And then enter the IP address that you'd like to use. So standard practice would be to use for example, a wildcard so that you can designate a range of IP addresses to include the IP addresses on your local network. And then you can enter any comments here if you wish, and then simply click on Save and Close. And our new entry is listed right here.